None of them were close enough to him this time to grab him before he tumbled out of the three-story window, PP first, and into the Darwin Award Hall of Fame. What it is, guys? It's Will Blast from HD, and today we are here to check out one of my favorite series on all of the intranets, Dumb Ways to Die. Now, if you guys want to watch the original video, it is, of course, by Be Amazed. Let's do this. My body, my body is ready. Do with that what you may. It, it can't be. Is it really that time again? Have so many more people really removed themselves from the gene pool in an increasingly First stupid and embarrassing First of all, who shoves way? a rocket up their own anus? Yes, so. Otherwise, Nobody I would be ready to present you with part 17 of this series. Wow. And I'm not even halfway through all the stories I've found. Nah. From dim-witted diving attempts to self-steaming stupidity, it's time to take a look at even more Darwin Award winners. Dumb ways to die. What the helmet? Nah. If you ride a motorbike or a bicycle, heck, even a scooter, you should wear a helmet. Seriously. Head versus pavement at high speeds isn't a fight that ends well for any head. Don't agree with me? Well, this next award winner might Ooh, help he change like your mind. Terminator. Back in 2011, New York streets were filled with roughly 550 bikers who were all protesting the state's mandatory helmet law. An annual protest that occurred every year since 1977 when the law was introduced. The bikers participating claimed mandatory helmet use does not result in lower fatality rates, yeah, which does. is a pretty interesting take if you dumb. ask me. It's pretty dumb. Except this year, as one rider proudly rode his bike helmetless, he went to hit the brakes when his bike suddenly fishtailed. The rider was sent flying over the handlebars, landing on the pavement head first. A medical expert at the scene stated they had no doubt the rider would have survived the incident if only they'd been wearing a helmet. Oh man, that's so perfect, I might die of an irony overdose. I mean... Forklift for cup. So here's a question. Let's say it's your job to change the bulb of a light in a warehouse, one that's 32 feet off the floor and nowhere near a wall. So using a ladder is out. How do you deal with this? Do you A, let your company know you're going to need some specialist equipment to replace something that high up, like a cherry picker, or B, improvise? I really hope most of you said A, because B leads to Darwin Awards, as one man in Japan found out back in 2017. Instead of asking for help, he decided to use a forklift truck to help him do the job. A forklift loaded with 37 wooden pallets to reach the bulb. Needless to say, this stack of unsecured wooden pallets was not the most structurally sound thing. And so when he asked his co-worker to engage the forklift and lift the unsecured stack of pallets up, it collapsed, with our man on top of it. He somewhat obviously didn't survive the fall. I bet that really wasn't the light bulb moment he was hoping for. Engine Trouble Ah, uh, gravity. In my opinion, it's the best force of attraction between any two masses. Although I'm not sure this next Darwin Award winner would agree. Back in 1990, a thief in Sydney, Australia set his sights on an old truck parked outside a glass recycling facility. Now the engine of a truck this size is so heavy it often requires a crane to lift it out. But our thief didn't have a crane, so he decided to use gravity instead and try to get parts out of it from below. He slid underneath the truck and began loosening the bolts, keeping everything in place so they would drop down, which worked like a charm. Unfortunately, he was still underneath when the transmission dropped out of it right onto his head. Employees at the recycling plant found him the next morning, and to really add insult to injury, they told the police that the beat-up old truck wasn't worth anything and they'd have given him the whole thing for free if he'd just asked. Man, that hurts more than a transmission to the face. <laughs> Do you have any Darwin Award winning stories of your own? Let me know about them down in the comments below. And while you're there, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons. If you like this part of the Darwin Award series, you're not going to want to miss what I have coming up in the next few videos. Trust me. Alright, what tale of total idiocy have we got next? 
What's inside? Ooh. There's something oddly satisfying about cutting into certain objects to see what's inside. Ooh, For like example, these are all golf balls. So colorful. This is a wasp nest. So many layers. And this is a grenade. Wait, why does that look so messy? Well, that might have something to do with the way it was opened. So allegedly, back in 2002, a German man discovered an old German World War II hand grenade. He desperately wanted to know what the inside of it looked like, but instead of taking it to a professional or looking it up in a book, he took matters into his own hands. Or technically vice. Yeah, he clamped this thing into a vice and then took a circular saw to it. However, he saw too deep, which sparked the still intact fuse and apparently detonated the grenade, showing the world what the inside of a Darwin Award winner looks like instead. Damn. God damn. Gun ho. Okay, this is a question to all the gun owners out there. Do you ever forget that you're carrying a gun? That may sound dumb, but that's exactly what at least one certifiably smart person has done in the past. And the fact he's in this video means it didn't end well for him. In Brazil, back in February 2023, a lawyer, who was also a firearm fanatic, often posting pics of himself with his arsenal of weapons on social media, took his mother to the hospital to get an MRI scan. Now, MRI machines utilize major magnetic forces. Their full name is literally Magnetic Resonance Imaging. So it's important that no one bring anything metal into the room while the machine is on. This isn't a lightly given instruction either. MRI rooms have huge warning signs that are impossible to miss, instructing people not to bring any metal objects inside. But somehow our man either failed to declare or forgot the handgun he had concealed in his waistband, which was obviously made of metal. But once the MRI machine was booted up, it was all too clear he had a gun on him because the magnetic force was so strong it triggered the gun, fatally wounding the lawyer. So alongside bringing a gun into the room, he'd also brought it in with the safety off. Wow. The family began to try and blame the hospital for failing to adequately warn them of the dangers of the MRI. They shut up pretty quickly when the hospital produced signed safety protocol documents from both the lawyer and his mother, confirming they did not have any metal items on their person before entering the room. So, by willful ignorance or a major memory lapse, this lawyer is guilty of perishing in an incredibly idiotic manner. I rest my case. Wine and Dine If someone throws some food or drink out, that usually means that it's gone bad or there's something wrong with it. Not always, though. I once found an entire hoagie on top of a dumpster. It was only a little, I want to say mud on it, but it kind of added to the flavor <laughs> and I was only sick for like two weeks afterwards worth it okay looking back that was a dumb decision so I'm lucky I didn't go the way of this next award winner back in 2004 in Georgia the country not the state inspectors at a local convenience dump spotted something inside one of the trash compactors it appeared to be a bottle of homemade wine Without questioning it, our winner reached in and... Ass no, this wine? isn't a death by trash compactor story. Oh my god. He fished it out. Our inspector and another man then proceeded to crack the bottle open and Ass swig wine, it. Anybody? They tried one gulp and then another, you but something about this wine was wrong. It really did not you taste good. Dumbasses. I know this for two reasons. One, someone had thrown it out, and two, it was antifreeze, a toxic chemical that really jams up the kidneys. Nigga. Needless to say, both men were poisoned by the toxic chemical, one so badly, he passed on. Wait, what's that glistening down at the bottom of the trash compactor? Why, it's a Darwin Award, just More for ass you. wine. Ass wine, anybody? Guzzoline. I make it in the toilet. In North Carolina back in 2012, investigators arrived at a scene that had them scratching their heads. Firefighters had been called to an apartment fire, and when they arrived, they found a man inside, sat on a very charred carpet, badly burned. As investigators looked around the scene, they tried to figure out the source of the fire when they noticed all the signs pointed to the man on the ground and a salsa jar nearby. After chatting to a few folks, they became aware that this wasn't the man's apartment. It belonged to a friend of his who was a mechanic. 
After chatting to him, it soon became clear to investigators what had happened. Their man had been chilling in his friend's apartment and noticed the sausage jar on the table, which was full of a strong-smelling yellowish liquid. Thinking it was alcohol, our man had opened it and helped himself to a big glug, before realizing it wasn't booze. It was gasoline. His mechanic friend kept a jar of it around to help remove grease stains from his hands. After spitting it out and dribbling it all down himself, the shock of it all made him reach for a cigarette. Can you see where this is going? You're yeah, serious? Yeah, gasoline is notoriously flammable, and once he sparked up his lighter, he accidentally set himself ablaze. So, what have we learned? Yeah, don't go drinking mystery liquids? Unless you want to end up in the next part of this series, that is. I mean... Who wants some of this? Alcohol can bring out the best in people, but more often than not, it brings out the worst, which is what it did to this next winner. Back in 2004, late one night in Wales, a young gentleman invited a few of his friends back to his apartment after a rowdy night on the town. Drunk as skunks, the party continued when our man thought it'd be really funny to pull down his trousers and present his pee-pee to the world while yelling, Who wants some of this? into the street below. Luckily, his friends grabbed him before he could fall out the window, and the next morning he admitted it had been a pretty stupid thing to do and he'd never dream of doing anything like that ever again. Fast forward to that very evening and our man is once again drunk as a skunk, pulling down his trousers and yelling, who wants some of this, to the world. Not his friends was the answer as none of them were close enough to him this time to grab him before he tumbled out of the three-story window, pee-pee first, and enter the Darwin Award Hall of Fame. Oh. To eat a goldfish. Have you ever bitten off more than you can chew? I don't mean have you ever taken on more work than you can handle or anything metaphorical like that. I mean, literally, have you ever bitten off a mouthful of food that turned out to be more than you could chew? Ah, uh, one guy at the back, and not just any guy, a Darwin Award winner. This should be good. Back in 1998, our man here from Ohio, only in Ohio, was watching his friend clean out a fish tank when he noticed one of the fish was particularly large, some five inches long. His friend mentioned how this big fish had actually been eating some of his other fish and so our man decided to give this fish a taste of its own medicine. He'd swallow the fish whole. He picked it up, dangled it over his mouth and then sucked it down. Come or on! at least he tried to. The fish put up a fight, lodging itself in his throat and was so slippery that when he started to choke, he couldn't pull it back out. Our man struggled for several minutes and while his friend tried to help by ringing the emergency services, neither our award winner nor the fish survived. While I'm sure the other fish in the tank were grateful for his sacrifice, I'm not entirely sure this is the solution he had in mind. Mm -hmm. Taking the plunge. There are some people who will do just about anything to achieve their adrenaline high, including one man from Norwich, UK, who back in 1998 decided he was going to jump off every bridge spanning the River Winsome. Pretty unique hobby there. Well, after completing this goal, his adrenaline itch still wasn't scratched, so he moved on to buildings overlooking the river, starting with a parking lot. Onlookers were baffled at this guy's brazenness and watched as he dived off the top of the 70-foot structure head first. There was just one small problem. He hadn't checked the depth of the water in the section of the river below, which turned out to be all of three feet. Yeah, safe to say that was a mistake he only got to make once. Steamy Buns if you're the kind of person who believes in spiritualism and magic, good for you. As long as your beliefs don't hurt anyone else, do what you will. Makes no difference to me. However, it might be wise to check your own beliefs from time to time, otherwise you might end up like this next winner. Back in October 2017, a spiritual Taoist medium in Malaysia was performing a stunt during a festival that he'd successfully done on a number of occasions. Something he called a human steaming. He would sit on top of a little wooden structure inside a giant pot with water in the bottom, alongside a variety of rice, sweet corn, and buns. A big lid was then placed over the pot and the entire thing was heated from beneath, with the boiling water steaming both the food 
and the medium. Nope. He claimed the elaborate ritual was very good for his health, except now it definitely wasn't. On this ill-fated occasion, after about half an hour, the lid began moving erratically. When his assistants took it off, the medium was unconscious and covered head to toe in second degree burns. No amount of magic could bring him back. It's unknown exactly what went wrong, with many assuming he fell unconscious and collapsed against the super hot pot. But honestly, if you're willing to sit in a pot full of steam which can reach temperatures of 212 degrees Fahrenheit and expect nothing to go wrong, the resulting human hot pot is all on you. It's real. The Wolf of Fall Street. Florida is a pretty weird place, as it is, but Tampa International Airport is where some of the weirder specimens of humanity can be found. A mix of in-flight booze, jet lag, and Florida makes it the perfect place to find Darwin Award winners. Like this next guy. Back in 2013, a man on the seventh floor who'd had several drinks and chased them with some anxiety medication decided in his inebriated wisdom to wrench open a set of elevator Fuck doors. Around, he's ledgered himself. Then he launched himself towards the elevator cables in the shaft in an apparent attempt to slide down them Tarzan style. Except he wasn't Tarzan and instead he launched himself head first down the elevator shaft. This really should have been the end of it, but the embarrassed family of the man were convinced the elevator must have malfunctioned. This was despite them having all seen the CCTV footage of him wrenching the doors open before throwing himself down the shaft. Oh boy. While they filed a lawsuit against the elevator company and by extension the airport itself trying to sue for damages. This meant 18 months later our award winner was dug back up only for the findings to cement the fact that he was inebriated and had used his brutish strength to wrench the doors open before yeeting himself into oblivion. So I'm not only awarding our man a Darwin Award, but for trying to capitalize off it I'm also giving his family a prestigious Dar Loser Award for feeling that hard to make money off his demise. Guess he wasn't the only one that got shafted. Extinguished. Extinguished. There are some things you should never stick inside other things. For example, jamming the wrong key into a lock, putting eggs in the microwave, or storing mayonnaise in an ice cream tub. However, while I have done all of these things and lived to reap the horrible consequences of my actions, one man went on to a whole nother level and never recovered from it. Back in 2017, a welder working for the Enterprise for the Construction, Repair, and Maintenance of Highways in Cicilino, Russia, noticed the size similarity between the base of a fire extinguisher and the muzzle of a decommissioned artillery howitzer. This is a weapon that falls somewhere between a cannon and a mortar, so in layman's terms, a very, very big gun. But he wasn't content with just putting the fire extinguisher in there. Oh no. Using his knowledge of welding fundamentals, he makes some calcium carbide with water, the reactive combination of which produces acetylene welding gas. After it was mixed, he threw the combination down the muzzle along with the fire extinguisher. The explosion jettisoned the fire extinguisher out like a makeshift projectile, or at least that's what the welder thought would happen. What actually happened was the fire extinguisher exploded, busting the muzzle and the extinguisher into hundreds of pieces of shrapnel, most of which ended up in our welder's head. So moral of this story, just because it can go in the hole doesn't mean you should put it in the hole. Good rule for life there. Uh, Trust me. No diddy, no diddler. For the gram. Every social media maven's dream is for a picture of theirs to take off online. But one selfie in particular captured back in 2017 really took off, in a different way. In March of that year, two young women in Mexico were excited to be at the racetrack in the sovereign state of Chihuahua. They decided to get a selfie for social media with the racetrack, but because it was built on flatlands, they needed some elevation to get the full track in the background. They found the highest point in the area they could and then clambered on top of a stranger's van before they began posing. The crowds were cheering loudly as they took several pictures, so neither of the girls heard the engines of the oncoming plane. Wait, plane? Like airplane? Yep, the racetrack wasn't the only thing built on these rural flatlands. There was a small runway next to the track too. 
As the plane came in to land, it came down to the same elevation as the girls, hitting them with the wing and sweeping them both off the van. I'd say it was the high point of the day, but seeing as the plane was landing, it was probably a low point. One-way ticket. If there's one thing Germany has mastered above any other country, it's their train system. Not only can they get you just about anywhere in the country, they are always on time. And they're also outrageously cheap. Seriously, it costs as little as $20 to get a direct train from Hamburg to Munich. Literally one end of the country to the other. But this wasn't enough for one German man back in 2017. No, for whatever reason, he decided he had a vendetta against one of the ticket machines outside the Dortmund Shore Horse Station and set about planning to destroy it. So at around 2 a.m. after indulging in a few drinks, he began spraying cans of aerosol gas into the machine, and clearly his sheer hatred of efficient public transport had clouded his judgment. Or maybe it was the booze because then he ignited the gas while still stood in front of the machine. Oh, no. The resulting explosion apparently rocked the neighborhood, but not as much as it rocked this guy, who was blown back and landed on his head so hard that he earned himself a Darwin Award. Well, that's one way to punch your ticket, I guess. Rooftop Rest If you're a heavy sleeper like me, you can nap almost anywhere. In the car? Yep. At your desk? Yep. Oh, yeah. On the roof, uh, Maybe. that sounds a little dangerous, I'll pass. But not everyone has my superior danger-sensing foresight. Back in the year 2000, a woman and her boyfriend in South Carolina had been smoking the, uh, the devil's lettuce, street greens, the old hot broccoli, if you get my drift, and decided they wanted to sleep under the stars. Did they do this by camping out on the ground? Nope. Instead, they grabbed their pillows and blankies and headed out onto the roof of the hotel they were staying in. In the morning, the boyfriend was woken up not by birdsong, but by the boots of police officers. As he went to wake up his girlfriend, he realized she wasn't there. In fact, sometime before dawn, she had rolled over in her sleep and off the roof down onto the busy street below. Hence, the police officer alarm clock. Well, I guess you could say that high didn't last long. Oh, Jehovah. If you've ever answered the door expecting to see a pizza delivery guy only to find a couple of Jehovah's Witnesses smiling back at you, you'll know it's a unique kind of awkward. Sucks. This Christian sect is known for its outreach initiatives attempting to convert people by going door to door delivering religious material. However, this approach clearly wasn't effective enough for one splinter group back in the year 2000 as they decided to display just how strong their faith was by standing in the middle of a road. This dedicated display of faith took place on the Interstate 55 freeway where members would preach to drivers stuck in traffic. However, on this day, the traffic was clearing up pretty quickly, which one witness didn't notice in time. As she was preaching the good book, she was struck, not by a revelation, but by an oncoming vehicle. Well, I'm no prophet, but even I could see that one coming. Backseat Antics There are plenty of places in the world where you can safely get frisky. And yet some people feel the need to add adrenaline to their antics by doing the deed in unorthodox places. Take these next two award winners, for example, who, back in 2017, decided to get down and dirty in the backseat of their SUV near a lake. The cab started rocking and the good times started rolling. No, literally. The pair were so keen to get nasty, the driver forgot to put the transmission into park, and so, in neutral, the truck rolled forward into the lake. Clearly, both participants thought it must be the heavens and earth that were moving and not them because even as the truck was submerged, neither of them thought to, you know, stop. I want to say that when water started pouring in, they at least tried to get out, but clearly they were having a good time, so I'm not assuming anything. Suffice to say, neither of them got out in time. Whether they got off is a different question entirely. But did they f at least get the finish? It's very cruel if they didn't at least get the finish. Not to edit that out. Super safe. All right, if you're old enough to be watching my videos, then I think you're ready for the talk on the birds and the bees. So when, <laughs> okay, 
When people love each other very, very much, though, not if you're my mom and dad. Well, okay, maybe that's not totally relevant. Look, basically, if you don't want to get pregnant or catch nasty diseases, you have to use protection. For men, usually this comes in the form of a condom, very thin rubber covering that goes over, well, you get the picture. So over in Gujarat, India back in 2021, one couple found themselves in the mood, but neither of them had any protection on them. So the gentleman got creative. After entering a hotel with his ex fiance someone he definitely didn't want to get pregnant, our man decided that the best way to ensure this was to use glue. And not just any glue, a high power epoxy resin. Nigga. After pouring it on his private parts and then somehow doing the deed, he began to feel unwell. He was rushed to the hospital the next day, however, the toxic epoxy chemicals had seeped into his bloodstream and caused multiple organ failure, from which he earned his Darwin Award. I feel like school education videos usually have a catchy saying at this point. <clears throat> so remember, if you want to do it, don't glue it. Fake out. That was good. Texas is one wild state, particularly when it comes to gun laws. It's pretty well known that anyone over the age of 21 doesn't need a license to openly carry a handgun in a holster there, and in 2021, the state had more than a million registered guns, the most in any state in the U.S., and half a million more than any other state. Jeez. With that many guns floating around, you gotta be real dumb to try and attempt what this next award winner did. Late one night back in January 2023, this idiot walked into a Houston restaurant and pulled out a gun. He was robbing the joint. He grabbed the phones and cash of everyone sitting at the tables, whipping his gun around threateningly before heading for the door. But as he was, an older gentleman sat behind him, snuck out of his booth with his own gun, and fired at the robber nine times. While excessive, this was a bold move as the robber could have turned and fired back except he was actually brandishing a fake gun. Wow, you gotta be missing a lot of brain cells to think this sort of stunt would end well in Texas of all places. Although I guess he's missing a lot more now. Which of these Darwin Award winners do you think went out in the most embarrassing way? Let me know down in the comments below, and I'll see you again soon for- With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Twisms!